Hello, in this video I'll give you advice about dealing with prostitutes. Alright, uh, most men, you don't get this kind of advice from your fathers or your mothers. Okay, so let me tell you about it. I had a teacher and uh, he was in the military and he told me how his mother and his dad were scared of their, of one of their of my teacher's brother, right? They're all, all of them were in the military, except the old parents. And so, uh, this teacher said, well, the only thing I had to do for the weekend was I had to go away, I, I, t I had to go tell my brother, go away or I'll do what I have to do. meaning that he would actually shoot his own brother for not moving out of the house. What happened is you get in the military and then you go home and you stay with your parents but then your parents are scared of you uh, because you are you are different. Uh, so what happened uh, this teacher explained how he had to go get his own brother out of the house and uh, well then he hears from his brother again he's in another state and he was in jail for hitting a prostitute alright so the second story here's a Jewish soldier uh, in the USA military but he's a Jewish soldier um, I was working on Miami Beach as a security guard and then we got this poster with this guy's face and he's the well-built soldier, personal trainer. And uh, he said, oh, Daniel, all that was, it wasn't really kidnapping. It wasn't even hostage. And I got labeled a sexual predator for a little misunderstanding with a prostitute, Daniel, in a hotel. There was no deadly weapon, Daniel, except my bare hands. Because since I was special forces and I locked the door, then supposedly the woman said that I was kidnapping her, that I was holding her hostage. And then the police said that because of my deadly hands, then uh, uh, it was assault with a deadly weapon or something like that. And it was a big mess. And he said it was all bro blown out of proportion and it was not real. And I, I believed him. Oh well. Then, there was another young soldier. He was my supervisor. And he said, uh, as a security guard on the beach, and he said he could not say no to such a beautiful prostitute that was in such poverty in Tijuana that she had no choice but to work as a prostitute. She said, the long hair, the beautiful face, everything. And so, to you young men uh, and women listening here, you can fix the prostitute problem by reading the human rights and becoming a world citizen. And for you men, stand up. Do, do you want your daughter to be a prostitute? No. So don't start drinking and teach your daughter and your son serious money skills like carpentry well teach a daughter so that she won't have to go become a prostitute teach her carpentry electricity yes cooking but more than that mechanics computer repair and the bible because i feel bad when uh, there was this country called usa on the back of the label of some expensive Liz, Liz Claiborne um, clothing. It said made in the USA, but it was made in USA, which is a town somewhere in some island, maybe in China, in order to be able to print made in the USA. Yeah, but made in the USA, China, which is, it, it, it confuses people. And it talked about 
how there were 200 factories and this guy picked up some um, labels from the floor and said this is from Liz Claiborne and then he walked around in the daytime and he showed the factories at night it was a documentary at night he walked around and he said that it was all prostitution because these women that were able to sew clothes uh, when the companies uh, moved to another probably to the Philippines probably to El Salvador when they moved away the women had no other choice but to become prostitutes so I hate these uh, these things that happen where corporations are playing with people's lives so oh here's another one uh, corporations are playing with people's lives by closing this company here and then opening it up in Haiti or wherever else then they move from there and 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 the women that used to work in these factories they end up being prostitutes there's gotta be a better way alright here's my friend oh my friend when he was about 20 years old he finally bought a used car and he couldn't find a girlfriend before uh, he loved reading mechanics books that was the first time I read a real technical book a red wire is connected to uh, just for a moment I was reading it and well he told me that he could not go to school but one night he talked about the one night with a prostitute in his little car all right All right, so here we go. This is Daniel now at 16 years old. I was waiting for my friend in Chicago to come down from his apartment where he lived with his mother. And it was dark at 6 o'clock in the morning and I'm waiting. And then uh, a woman knocks on my window and I lower the window all the way. That was a mistake. And the woman sticks her head into the car and she turns to face me and she says I'll give you a blowjob for five dollars and I remember that she had no teeth she had already frightened me by getting inside the car like that frightened me and surprised me so I said no thank you ma'am I'm waiting for my friend to come down and then she left and at 16 I had not had a blowjob oh. alright so that was a very dangerous uh, situation I, I don't lower your window when strangers will come up to your window and don't be a sitting duck waiting and waiting and waiting and that's why you're supposed to have your whatever you need to have to feel safe which are illegal in Chicago huh. but I saw some of them back then anyway I saw two I'm talking about guns alright at 20 I'm walking with my mother to a restaurant in Little Haiti in Miami Florida at 7 p.m. at night and a male pimp on a bicycle said to me boy do you want girl and I probably said no thank you and then I probably had red ears because you know my mother was right next to me so I look white I should not have been at little Haiti after dark now I don't go anywhere after dark most of the time now at 22 in the building that I live with my mother on the beach Miami Beach a white male pimp in his 20s with a hyper look something like that right in his eyes said to me a hyper look in his eyes said to me please have sex with my wife she's in the van she really needs it and I don't know what's wrong but I can't keep up with her but I and I was so surprised I said 
uh, no thank you and now that I'm old I, I thought about this well when I wrote this and I'm thinking I should have called the cops because the girl was probably kidnapped all right at 23 or 22 years old I'm walking by the stores on Miami Beach and I say hi to a smiling young girl and she said she was from Ohio and that she was 16 and I tell her that I'm from Chicago and I'm about 22 or 23 years old around here then I invite her to walk to the beach with me but she said she was working and she turned to smile at the passing cars and she was waving and so so I asked her what time she got off of work okay so I didn't get it and she just repeated that she was working then I thought that she didn't want to go with me to the beach but now that I am old actually even even back then I said well maybe she, I was I was wondering about her now that I'm old I understand that working meant that she was looking for a customer for sex also I didn't know that if you are 18 or older then you are not allowed to have sex with a minor a minor is someone younger than 18 years old I didn't learn that until I was 28 and an 18 year old co-worker security guard told me I asked him what is jailbait because he had used that word when two young girls had passed and then <coughs> that's when I found out about jailbait jailbait is uh, like if you have sex with a girl that's 17 years old and you are 18 I think that's the way it goes but especially if you're 27 you know or 20 25 and she's 17 all right the next one at 27 or so I had sex three times with this girl and at the third time she got up and looked through my wallet and said that's all you have eight dollars and I was so shocked because I thought there was no charge and, and and this was the third occasion so I just left and a year or two later I went back but we didn't have sex we just talked about books I tell you this so that you can prepare yourself when you are a man also a white girl in high schools oh, okay well this is just extra and I already told about it in the other video it was about the gr white girl that in the high school where I was a substitute she said that she was wearing shorts and that a man walked up to her and squeezed her butt and that she didn't kick she didn't scream she until the guy let go and she went and sat down in her, in her boyfriend's car then the, the man left and then her boyfriend comes back and said what's wrong and she doesn't tell him anything but uh, this is just advice for women don't wear shorts when you're pretty oh boy th could that be offensive don't wear shorts when you're under 50 all right under 75 so that <laughs> don't wear shorts All right, so I told you about prostitutes. Be careful out there. Talk to you later. You can, you will, you must.